This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Hey, what's up? We are now at the Kia headquarters in uh, Frankfurt. And here, behind me here, you see uh, Kia EV6 GT. This is the fastest EV6 variant of uh, yeah, this kind. And uh, let me show you the differences. Um, we have slightly different front. We have bigger and more um, powerful brakes, front and rear, and also this uh, kind of neon yellow greenish. Um, um, try to just to see the color, the brake caliper. So the brake is way more uh, it's way beefier now. And also we have Michelin. Um, let's see here, Pilot Sport 4S. <laughs> we need proper high performance tires now, and also the, the tires wider, 255, 40, 21 in the front. And in the rear, we also have more, way more power in the rear now. Uh, there are 255, 40, 21 in the rear. So, uh, and also the back here also has a slight difference, but I guess what you guys came here for is not to look at the car, you want to see how it performs. And we are in Deutschland after all, so you're gonna go on a proper high speed run. And let's see now, so I can show you also inside here. There are some design elements here. You see some stitching, uh, sport seat or GT seats, this kind of bucket seat. And also we have a dedicated GT button here to set some, uh, some of the GT specific settings. This one is the regular drive mode in the, the other cars, but here we have the GT. So this is like the, the beefed up EV6. <laughs> so, um, all right, I'm going to do a little bit of preparation and then off we go on the Autobahn. Let me show you, by the way. Oh, I like this color, this, this uh, matte, uh, kind of like Batman color. <laughs> all right, all right, let's get ready. All right, so this is kind of interesting. I have uh, Draghi here. We can see the speed. This is GPS speed. I also record um, with, um, OBD, uh, hooked up to OBD. We have a car scanner here. So you can see this is state, real state of charge. This is uh, display, state of charge and display. We have battery power here. We have the voltage here. This is current, this is cell voltage, battery temperature. It's been DC fast charge. Oh, and by the way, I have the driver is Alex. So Alex, you are a professional driver, right? Yes. You're a racing driver. Correct. <laughs> and you've been driving sports cars on the the Notch Life, yes. Notch Life, <laughs> we have proper racing driver here. This is good. And also, yes, um, uh, actually all the press people, we are not allowed to drive the car, but at least we get a, a driver. So that also works for me because uh, then I can focus more on the numbers. Uh, so you see that the battery has been um, uh, heated up a little bit. Uh, did, did you guys uh, DC fast charge prior to this? Uh, or before my turn now? Yes, uh -huh. good, yeah. That probably explains why we have a decent temperature in the battery. And I try to find other values, uh, but they just showed up as nothing or, or not even zero. But at least we have some numbers here. So uh, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> so we have uh, 585 horsepower. And one thing I want to see is once, we, once Alex hammers it, once we can floor it, you guys can check out the battery power here. And uh, I want to see how flat it is how this car can maintain uh, the power. But right now we, are, we have a little bit of traffic and it's uh, 2.30 in the afternoon on a Monday. So there might be some traffic, but Alex know what to do. He's been doing this, uh, these press events. So uh, yeah, this is good. Actually, th in a way, this is actually better because if I would be driving, first of all, I had to, cons I had to figure out where to go, where I can go schnell and everything, but we have a local here, a uh, German. You, Alex is German, right? Yes, correct. Ah, oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay. So, Alex, you could just do your thing. I'm always okay. ready. You just do whatever you want to do. Okay. And uh, we'll see. So, you know what? On paper, the the EV6 GT is even far... Oh, look at this. Look at this number here. 400. Wow, that sound. Is that, the, is that fake sound? Uh, yeah, it comes out of the sound box, yeah. Okay, let me see. Can we disable it? Uh, yes. 
I can try to find yeah, it. Okay, sure. since you're driving, okay. I'm gonna try to find the setting for it. It's, um, I think I know where this is. In the, on the vehicle, and there's this um, active sound design. Yeah, so I will turn it off. So now we don't have any uh, fake sounds. So um, we'll try again. But you see, we can't go too fast right now because of traffic. But you guys saw that the, the, the power output, this one, was nice and flat. And uh, Alex, do you know? Ooh, ooh, look at that. Oh, 400 kilowatt. Oh, four, oh, it has a slight drop, but okay, it drops a little bit. <laughs> 200, we suddenly we're doing 200 kilometers per hour. Oh, good brakes. That's not even maximum braking power, right? Nope. Okay. Yeah, those brakes look freaking beefy. <laughs> but right now, I can accelerate a little bit more. Oh yeah, oh yeah, now let's go for it. <laughs> oh, so let's go schnell. <laughs> Ooh. I'm, I'm quite surprised that we don't have too high noise levels. I yeah. mean, it's, it's bearable. I mean, we're doing 240 kilometers per hour after all. And this is GPS speed even. <laughs> wow. Oh, good. wow, really good brakes. <laughs> and also, of course, it helps that we have um, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. Those are really grippy, really grippy and wide tires. Let's see now. Uh -huh. I don't know if you guys can hear it. When, when Alex hammers it, we get, um, we hear the, I think this is the sound of the inverter, a high pitch noise, maybe 10 kilohertz, something. Okay, now we come to 120 soon. But uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was quite brutal, the way it just accelerated. So, okay, 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 I'm gonna reset. Okay, okay I'm ready. Okay, yeah. and let's go. Right, go, let's see. Okay, let's see how many seconds that takes. <laughs> Oh, it gets, it can maintain 400 kilowatt for a little bit, and now it goes a bit slower. Okay, so then it, it drops. All right, let's see. 100 to 200 kilometers per hour took 9.3 seconds. Okay, add that to the, the um, uh, 3.5 3 second uh, zero to 100, then it takes roughly 11 and uh, almost 12 seconds then. Mm. Hmm. Okay, in this regard, it seems like the EV6 GT doesn't have the nice flat curve like uh, like the um, um, the i4. I was hoping that they can have a nice and flat curve, but on the, on the other hand, I haven't really measured i4 with uh, with OBD. So it seems. I mean, I the i4 has a has a boost function. But then do we know for sure if the boost will allow a flat curve? But also the i4 doesn't have 580 horsepower. It's lower than that. But actually, what you see here, the battery power, it was displaying 400 and something kilowatts. I mean, this is the charging, this is the, the highway with the charging thing, right? Yes, correct. <laughs> Okay, maybe you can just hook up to that one and get some juice. <laughs> <laughs> but I've never seen uh, a truck or a bus or whatever who used it. So okay, well, okay. can we go? Can we go a little bit faster now? Sure. All right, thank you, thank you. Oh yeah, <laughs> 420 kilowatts, and then it drops. And then look, look at the RPM here. Let's see then. Let's see how high the RPM is. 16k RPM. <laughs> it's crazy. 17k. What? 18k. <laughs> huh? How many fossil can engines can go? Eight, 19k RPM. Almost hit 20k. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I, ha I, I have to say it has a it has an okay uh, pull past 200 kilometers per hour. Because think about this. This is not. This is not a. A, a small sedan. It's actually uh, a decent uh, sized family car. It has the same space as a fat e-tron even. Which means that when you go past 200 kilometers per hour, the, the, the drag becomes quite significant. But it can still pull. And also if you look here, the temperature doesn't go sky high. It just hovers around that temperature, okay. 
And then, oh, we have a Porsche in front of us. <laughs> oh yeah, he moves over, great. Oh, danke schön, danke schön. All right, let's see, let's go schneller. Oh, let me see if we can hit 20,000 uh, RPM. So 260 kilometers per hour is the V max. 250 now. Okay, there's a little bit of wind noise, all right? But the road is quite smooth. They're almost 20k. <laughs> we hit 20k RPM. <laughs> wow, 20k RPM. Holy macaroni. We do. Hey, you know what? It feels stable. It feels stable also. And it's really, really nice of the yeah. handling. It, it just rock solid at 260, kilo, 260 kilometers per hour. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Because I, I have to say, I can't say that every Tesla I've driven at those speeds are that stable. They tend to... When you go past 200, 220 kilometers per hour, I feel like the Tesla is a little bit out of its comfort zone. Well, also, the lane changing, for example, I'm driving 180. Yeah, and and you I do go quick lane change. Like oh, ah, so is the suspension more yeah. uh, more stiff? Okay, it's stiffer, right? Yeah. So it's stiffer than the regular GT line. Yes. And and uh, you can also change it. You mentioned it; it has adaptive. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> oh, so we go, are we going back that way? Um, we will drive another way. Yes, okay, good. <laughs> that is what we call Stau. <laughs> yep. That is proper Stau. But yeah, I have some numbers here I can show you now. Uh, CO200, well, these are, oh no, this is just, uh, this is something else. Yeah, this is not today. But at least 100 to 200 kilometers per hour. Okay, it's this one. We can see the graph that um, it has the G-force is fairly flat but uh, yeah it, it has a little drop and now you can see the part times also okay from 100 to 150 kilometers per hour took only three point wow that was schnell oh damn <laughs> so from 100 to 150 kilometers per hour three point okay and then from uh 150 to two yeah okay so it has a little yeah that that kind of it it kind of the power and the pull dries out a little bit. But that, that is fast. Uh, okay, what else can we see? Or oh, where is the biggest drop? Uh, even, even 100 to 160 kilometers per hour is fairly fast, 4.2 seconds. But then it starts losing. Yeah, yeah, it's actually closer to 200 kilometers per hour. But um, let me see, did we do any launches after each other? Mm, no. 350 okay it seems like okay here is a voltage sack now 670 volt so it sucks a little bit <laughs> 250 ah oh, yeah it actually reaches 250 kilometers per hour quite fast i wonder if this is faster than the the model 3 performance because i remember it, the model 3 performance takes some time to hit 260 also but here, oh, and look at that region. Holy macaroni, that was two, I just noticed, 200, what is it, 280 kilowatt region. <laughs> well, I mean, officially it was supposed to be 150 kilowatt region, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's apparently it's more. Can we do a little uh, region test now, if you go, if you hammer it, sure. and then region? Let's, let's pay attention to this number here now. Okay, all right, now try to region. Okay, let me see. 200. Okay, that was too much. Ah, uh, if it's too much, then the brake take over. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I guess it wants to conserve. I mean, it wants to get the, the, the right feel also. So I guess we have to kind of brake gently then. Like that? Yeah. Oh, 275. What? What? Okay, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's try again and then maybe get a little bit, little bit more speed. Yeah. Okay. If you can go hit around 200 sure. and then we try to. Okay, now we can try to regen. 290, 300, what? 335 kilowatt, that was a little peak. So it seems like the region here is massive. It's even more than e-tron. E-tron brags about uh, 270 okay. kilowatt. Can you do a little, uh, another region test? Just uh, yeah. see, see if we can get a little bit longer region. Uh, 
Okay, now I'm trying to break, uh, not too hard, but try to break the uh, region a little bit now. Okay, that might have been too hard. Uh, too, too hard? Yeah, too hard breaking. Now we can also try to stress the system by regening and by accelerating, see if it gets exhausted or not. Okay, now we try to regen a little bit. 260, 300, 340. Two, ah, okay, then we get a longer. Ah, I see, I see, okay. And then, uh, okay, Alex, if you try to just let off the pedal, what happens then without touching the brake? How, how is the... I can do the recuperation into max. Okay, okay, if you switch to the max recoup, yeah, let's see what there's, happens now. But there's, ah. there's police, I have to be careful. Okay, okay. Achtung, police. But it's uh, unrestricted, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No limit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, always be careful. A, B, C. So I do the max maximum recuperation again. Yeah. Okay. If we, okay. Let's see now. Oh, so if you just let off the pedal, then it, it hovers around 150 kilowatt. Ah, all right, all right. But uh, so it has blending brake, so it can go actually over four, over 300 kilowatts at peak. Huh. Interesting. That's the first time I've seen it. Um, hmm. Cool. Okay, and also you see that the voltage now, if we're just cruising, then the voltage is hovering around 700. But also the it looks a bit bumpy now. But the road here, this is um, concrete, is it, uh, Alex? What What do you mean? Is it is a cement cement very concrete yes. here? Yeah. So that's why you guys see the shake. Also, the other uh, other journalist in my group, Norwegian journalist, they also mentioned that it's quite bumpy around here. So um, just bear that in mind. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the wheels. The wheels have been perfectly balanced. It's just that the road is bumpy. And here we come to the 100 zone. Huh. Well, that was interesting. So um, I guess I can calculate. I can put on the screen the the, um, um, the voltage. Yeah, yeah, so now actually now at lower power we have uh, 700 volt. And then it was dipping down to 600 and something uh, when we hammered it. And that's actually not too bad. Uh, in comparison, uh, for example, a Tesla, well, we can compare it to Tesla because they also tend to have uh, uh, high performance uh, EVs. Tesla t would probably drop to around 500 volt, uh, what I've seen, equivalent, but then of course they don't have 800 volt system. But when I tested, um, I think it was the Model, Model Y, yeah, I think it was Model Y long range, it was dipping that low. But of course, uh, maybe I should test the performance. But they they have the same battery anyway. So, can we do another hundred to two hundred? Sure. Launch. Okay. 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 Yes, we need just need enough. This is funny. We need okay. enough space in front of us. Okay, I'm ready. And go. Okay, let me see. Four hundred kilowatt. Oh. Oh. Yeah, the fastest, the fastest sprint is there. Okay, two hundred now. <laughs> the fastest is from hundred to two hundred. Then it's of 100 to 150. Let me check again. 9.5 seconds, slightly slower. It could have been because the, the state of charge is lower now. But yeah, you see again here, just the same here. 3.5 seconds, 100 to 150. <laughs> and again, run around 4 seconds, 100 to 160. Wow. And then 100 to 160 is equivalent to um, 60 to 100 miles per hour. That's fast. Yeah. That is schnell. <laughs> so it means that uh, for for normal driving it's plenty it is neck snapping fast when you accelerate from zero to uh, 100 but also what tends to be the case is that yeah you, okay you can go you can just go fast okay. alex if you want to go fast, yeah. <laughs> he can do this all day <laughs> what do you see yeah yeah <laughs> um see that um Many EVs, they tend to be slow past 100 kilometers per hour. But here, it just has a nice pull, and you still have nice power. Even now, we have 300 kilowatt power. <laughs> the battery is heating up a little bit. Then we can regen. Okay, 280. Oh, 300 kilowatt. Wow. Oh, that is perfect regen. We were getting, we were getting 300 kilowatt for, for actually a long time. Okay. 330 kilowatt. So it seems that you can you can take 300 kilowatt for more than just split second even. Or, and then wh I mean, why do I focus so much on the region part? Well, because oh oh, oh this, is that the prototypes? Prototype. Well, we are in the 
we are in uh, Frankfurt after all. Huh. Oh, they have exhaust. Okay, not interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, uh, why is it useful or important to have high regen? Well, if you can uh, regen 300 kilowatts, it means that you put less stress on the brakes. But at least it seems like this car, uh, when Alex brake hard, it seems like it then actually cancels or it, it doesn't regen. It could be to uh, preserve the feel of the braking. Because um, actually for no more normal driving, I've noticed this in, uh, I think it was the EQA, EQ, EQB or EQA, EQB maybe. It had a weird thing when, it, when I let off the pedal to regen, it then regens of course, but then when I push the brake pedal to activate stronger regen, it has this weird leap where it suddenly brakes harder and then less or something weird like that so you don't get that smooth braking feel but when i tested Taycan, they they managed to tune it so that you get nice and smooth braking feel and over here well i i was not driving myself but it didn't i didn't feel a weird jolt or a weird uh, transition between uh, region and brake or, or friction brake so that could be the explanation why but maybe if uh, Kia would want to tune this further if they can manage to master the region they could try to allow uh, like if you just stomp on the brake it should try to re region at 300 kilowatt or whatever it can take but also try to blend the brake the the, um, the physical brake or the, the friction brake somehow but maybe it might be hard yeah <laughs> it might be easier said than done but um, yeah interesting to see the numbers at least huh. and let me see do we see anything else going on now the temperature has gone up a little bit here and also one uh, one kind of interesting observation is that this is the lowest uh, sensor and this is the higher sensor and you see i've seen this over and over again that the difference between the min and the max is usually around 10 degrees celsius it can be even higher i've seen 12 degrees celsius um and this is actually a little bit uh, downside because um, in a Tesla I've seen that uh, yeah it was in the Model 3 the Delta between the the, the hot and the cold uh, sensor is only one degree Celsius and why is it a problem well because when we are charging usually the min temperature here would be the limitation if the battery is too cold uh, if, for example, if this one is not 25 degrees, if it's 24 degrees, even if the max or most of the pack is hot enough, then the whole system will not be able to take 230 kilowatts. Yeah, but then you just heat up the battery, right? Yeah, yeah, of course, that, that's the problem also, because if you heat up the battery, then it's nice and hot, you arrive at the fast charger, you get the maximum speed, no problem. But the problem then is that this one, the max, because there's also an upper limit when you go to when the battery becomes too hot then it needs to throttle and then it will charge slower so that's why you want to have the delta as low as possible uh, so ideally if it was 25 it was 30 and 31 degrees then we can we can then get fast charging speed in the beginning and then we get uh, but then also yeah, okay but then that was in the regard of charging but what about when you're driving well again i think the same applies to driving without me having to test it but i would assume that you know when we hammered it with the max power here the lower temperature here would dictate how much power output you can get um but then of course this one the the max will then dictate again how much power you get so if it if the battery pack becomes too hot then it needs to throttle down and the other way around but on the other hand what i've seen in the in the kia ev6 battery pack and also the ionic 5 battery packs is that um they they are still able to take decent speed here for oh they're, they're even they are able to take decent charging speed even if the battery is freezing cold like zero degrees celsius and um also for driving 
you can still get okay power output even when the battery is quite cold. But uh, I can mention that uh, the consumption for this trip, this trip was 67.7 um, uh, kilometers long. It took 52 minutes. Of course, average speed was low and uh, consumption was 462 watt hour per kilometer. All right, a little bonus clip, bring out the thermal camera. And you can see that, well, we've been driving at least. The wheels are hot. And if you look at the tire, we can read around 40 degrees Celsius yeah, on the surface there. Huh. So it's actually warmest on the, in, on the inside there. 39, 40 degrees Celsius. Oh, oops, sorry. 39 to 40 degrees Celsius. A little bit, I guess it just gets some natural cooling on the outside here. But then the brake disc is always tricky, you see, because it's reflective. So I'm not sure how the heck we're supposed to read, oh, sorry, uh, the temperature here, but the closest one I get is 33 degrees Celsius. And what about the brake caliper? Uh, I mean, one, one thing you can do is to put a tape, like a masking tape over the brake disc, and then we measure it. But uh, this is the closer we get. But they are quite big. I noticed that they're bigger than the regular one. And let's take a, take a look at the back. The rear tires, actually the rear tires, they, they have way more power output. Oh, 42 degrees, yeah. It seems like the rear tires are warmer, a little bit hotter than the, the back tires. Here's where all the power goes. Around 200, uh, was it again 270 kilowatt, was it? In the rear and then around 160 kilowatt in the front. Can we get any readings here? 32 degrees Celsius. Hmm. Okay, but uh, we didn't uh, break that hard. Well, what kind of surface is that? Hmm. Okay. And also, you don't hear any cooling going on right now. So the car is just, just flexing. It's not uh, running any battery cooling or anything. <laughs> yeah, the, all the sound you hear is from outside right now. The car is just idling here, not doing anything. What about in the back? Do we see anything in the back here? In the exhaust? Nah, nothing, nothing really. Hmm, okay. And also, I was told that supposedly the GT has the same motor as the regular one, the GT line but there is an additional inverter in the back. But the front has the 160 kilowatt motor that is also used in the rear, on the rear wheel drive only. Yeah, the rear wheel drive. So at least that's what I heard, um, yeah. But it was fast, it was fast indeed. So I think that's it then.